welcome back to the channel guys. The sun's out, it's a beautiful spring day. I'm even standing here in a t-shirt. So today is the perfect day to mess around with some solar stuff, in particularly this giant Victron solar um, charge controller that we've got here. And this Panasonic HIT panel, which is gonna kick out loads of power. And what are we gonna do with that power? We're gonna charge up e-bike batteries directly from that solar panel. So no inverters, no converting things to higher voltage. We're just gonna go straight to the e-bike battery. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's take a second to just appreciate the absolute beast that this thing is. This is absolutely giant. <laughs> Look at this. It's insane. This has got a huge heat sink on the bottom as well, and it probably needs it as well, but these things are really efficient, so maybe not. So this can handle 150 volts of PV, so straight from a panel, 150 volts. I'm not sure in the exact minimum voltage, I'll have to check that, but I think it's fine for this panel that I'm gonna uh, be plugging it into. And the current that it can put out is 70 amps, a whopping 70 amps of current, which is just, a lot bigger than what I've been doing. And you can see that by, it's represented by these terminals on the bottom, which are, you know, substantially bigger than um, a lot of the other Victron charge controllers that I've been using. Um, this is for a display option as well. So you can actually have a display that clicks on the top of there and gives you all the information you need to. But we're gonna be using this with Bluetooth because it has Bluetooth built in, hence the little Bluetooth logo there. So I'll be able to set this up with the Victron app using just a regular smartphone. But first, what we need to do is sort out the connections. So on the back of my trailer here, I've got MC4 connectors, which go into the trailer and into the, um, into the charge controller that I've already got in there. So for this experiment, I'm gonna be just borrowing these plugs. So I'm gonna unplug these out, and then I need to get some leads with MC4 connectors on as well and plug them into here or you know screw them into there so I can wire this panel directly into this charge controller. So we're basically going solar panel, solar charge controller, and then an e-bike battery, which isn't here yet. Right, into the workshop stroke studio. I've got the MC4 connectors, so I've just got some on a bit of wire just hanging out. So I just need to strip the end off those, and then we're gonna go straight into the PV terminals on here. So just a quick check on here, just to make sure everything's looking all right. Got it set to DC. This panel's putting out 68 volts open circuit, so perfect. Because we're basically gonna be charging a 52 volt battery, so that's a 14S e-bike battery. This one on here, which fully charges to 58.8 volts. 4.2 times 14, 58.8. So let's get these in here then. Oh, I love this stuff. So normally really should have a fusing line with the panels and a DC cutoff switch as well. But for the case of this test, I'm not gonna bother I'm just doing this as a sort of low power test. And this is basically gonna serve as a test because what I ultimately want to do is use this to charge my electric car. But we're gonna start small and we're gonna work up. So next up, we need to sort out the battery connections. I've got this little thing that I made, which is actually for another charger, which goes into the side of this battery. This is the e-bike battery in here, and then breaks that out into um, like your Anderson connectors. So what I need to do now is just make up a little lead to go from here all the way over to the battery section of this. Got a bit of wire, which is actually a lead from something else, which I'm now gonna sabotage. Leave a bit of wire so I can use that plug again. Before anyone panics, don't worry, we're only charging at about three or four amps, so this wire's gonna be fine. Lovely click. Make sure we get the polarity the right way around. Otherwise, boom! And when you've got wires that are the same color, it gets a bit annoying, because you have to double check which one's positive and which one's negative. That one's the positive. Right, so they're in now, there's the other end. So what we can do is we can plug it into the battery and then uh, hopefully it won't go bang and we can configure this. Moment of truth. Got a flashing light on here. That's a good sign. Right, so now we need to fire up the, the old phone. Obviously we haven't got any solar panel connected in here, but I just want to get this set up first. So right, we'll do a quick scan. Smart Solar 15070. So it's showing all the other things in here as well. So I've got this workshop battery meter, which is underneath that keyboard. Um, and then the Smart Solar uh, 120, which is the 20 amp one. This one's the 70. So if we go into here, it should ask me if I want to pair. 
Yeah, and I think we're zero, 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 as usual, yeah. Ah, all right, so, got to do a firmware update. It's quite out of date, 2.14 versus version 2.23. They do update these quite frequently though, so it might not be that out of date. I won't go off on a tangent and start playing around with this because I'll be in here all day if I do that. It's done anyway, looks like it's just finished. So continue. Right, we're in business. Oh, it's actually saying do another update. Okay, all right, we'll do that then. Something different is happening now. Okay, we'll let it do its thing. Always let it do its thing. Never disconnect the power while the firmware is updating or anything like that. You could have a problem. Da, 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 da. Right, yeah, so like I was saying, what I want to do is I want to use this to charge the Twizzy. Now the Twizzy also uses like a 48 volt battery, so this is perfect for that. Now the problem with the Twizzy is because it's so small, you're not really going to be able to fit a solar panel on the roof. But what I do want to do is use this as a DC to DC converter. So potentially what you could do is put any lithium battery on the PV input and then basically regulate that down to 48 volts out of here. So effectively you could just charge the Twizzy, you know, from any battery that you've got available so long as it's higher than, um, you know, the actual Twizzy's battery. And of course that would work with batteries up to 150 volts as well. So the idea is stick that in the car, wire it up to the battery, via the BMS, do some clever stuff there so it doesn't blow up basically. And then you could put batteries in the back seat and make a really good range extender. Better than the range extender that I've previously made because this way you're not actually stepping up to mains voltage, you're just keeping it around the same kind of voltage level. So that'd be a lot more efficient. Right, so we can go into it then. Fire this up and then we can start seeing what's actually happening. So battery voltage here you can see is 54 volts. So actually it's not that discharged. So I might have to go run around the block or something and wear that down, which is always a welcome thing to do. But what I do need to do before I hook it up to the panel and start charging it is I need to configure it because it's not going to be set to the right battery voltage or anything else like that. So let's get stuck into that. Probably shouldn't slip the phone on top of there, but hey. So battery, it's already recognised automatically that it's a 48 volt battery, which is good. Maximum charge current. Yeah, I think I'm going to blow my battery up if I have it at 70 amps. So we're going to set that down to three amps. The maximum charge rate for that battery, if anyone else has got one of these batteries as well, by the way, that's on because this battery's connected. Anyway, that is four amps maximum. Don't go any higher than that, you'll wreck it. So you have a thing called battery presets, which is done using this switch down here. I think that's the one. So you can actually pre-configure this so you don't actually have to go into this app and do it, but I'll do it by the app because it's a lot easier for me. Um, so we want to use a defined battery and then that basically gives you access to all these other parameters as well. So we want to set absorption voltage um, to 58.8. That's really the maximum. We might need to come down from that a little bit. You don't really need a float voltage on lithium batteries anyway. And you certainly don't need equalization. That won't do anything. You've got other things in here. Temperature compensation, more for lead acid batteries, that really. And low temperature cutoff, you can set that if you're doing this properly. But for this case, we'll just leave that disabled. So that's the settings load output, all the other things on here we're not really going to use. Um, this has got a load output. Has it actually got a load output? No, it hasn't. And that is done. So that's basically set that now. So now we can go and plug this into the solar charger and in theory, it will charge it up. All right, mission, run the battery down a little bit then. That should do it. Let's test it out then. Right, so I've plugged in the battery. This has come to life. We've got 53 volts. It hasn't actually taken much out of the battery at all. So next thing to do is plug in the panel. All right, plug that in. So we've got 67 volts coming in on the panel. You should see this start to climb up now as it puts in um, some current into the battery. So yeah, it's rising up. Now I think I actually turned this back down to about two amps. So I think it's gonna hover around two amps there, yeah. So 100 watts going in there now. How cool is that? So straight from the panel, straight into here, and then into the e-bike battery. No conversion to mains voltage or anything. We can afford to go a little bit higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the battery. Yeah, I've turned it down to two amps. I'm gonna turn it up to four amps, and then we'll see what happens. Should rise up and see how much we can get out of it. Um, let's drop down a little bit now. 
I think it should it should do four amps at the moment. We've got quite a bit of sun on the panel. So actually, I don't think it's going to go higher than 100 watts because we've got a fair bit of sun on there, but I just don't think it's it's not really in the right place. It's sort of over there. This, this panel was tilted up, you definitely get more, but we're not in the summer yet, so you might be expecting a bit too much. Also approaching half three, I reckon if this was sort of midday or something, this would be up um, maybe in the 200 watt range or something like that, but, but that's not bad at all really. That's super efficient that is, because there's no conversion to mains or anything like that. It's just literally that panel, that charge controller, straight into that battery, charge from the sun, we'll just leave that to it. All right, sun's going down. Where did we get to? Where did we get to? So still putting a little bit of something in, nine to 10 watts, something like that. And overall so far, 100 watt hours. I say so far, because I'm probably just gonna resume this tomorrow when the sun comes out again. Um, so 100 watt hours, doesn't seem like a huge amount, but um, you know, bearing in mind it was like towards the end of the afternoon anyway. And we are, you know, not even, we're still early spring at the moment. So that would explain that. But it's all good and it's all working. So we'll just pick this up tomorrow, I reckon. One thing I noticed with this is the Bluetooth is so much stronger than any of the other Victron um, devices I've used before. I was literally right at the other side of the house and I could still pick up the signal from that on the iPhone. So something something interesting is happening inside this. I wonder if they've increased it because of the size. Because presumably if you, the way this normally would be installed is you'd have you know, loads of these probably in, in your loft space, you know, kind of linked up. And obviously if you've got quite a few of them, access could be a problem. So, you know, the Bluetooth, if you're going to configure them over Bluetooth, then it's got to be got to be on point. So I reckon they've done some work on that to improve it. And cut to the next day. Cut, because I've got a cut on my head. So, sun's out, it's going again. I reckon we should be getting some good power today. Look, 158 watts. Um, this battery is at 56 volts, so it's only got a little way to go. But it's only 10 to 11, so we'll be able to log the peak power on this app anyway. Um, that's providing it doesn't fully charge by the time you know the sun actually kind of reaches its strongest point just drop down there as the sun went behind the cloud right here we go then so the yellow lights on here which means we've reached the absorption voltage so it'll just sit here and it will just basically back the current off um, and hold it at 58.8 volts so we we basically charged you're pretty much fully charged there it's not really going to put a huge amount more in and if we look at the total yield you can see it's come right up 280 watt hours so yeah with yesterday's yield at about 100 watt hours which you can't see because this has now been turned off and cycled so it resets um, but yeah with yesterday's one as well you've basically got about 400 watt hours so it's kind of nearly um, nearly half the battery capacity and that's quite impressive really because the battery was holding 54 volts um, for ages so that's kind of it's like you know like in lithium battery terms a discharge curve normally kind of comes down a bit at the beginning and then plateaus out and then goes tails off as it reaches the discharge so that 54 volts is probably going to be the plateau around the 3.8 volt mark anyway also what we can see is the p max which is the maximum power 207 watts which isn't bad at all that panel is capable of 330 watts and i have seen it exceed that in the summer um, when the sun's directly over the top of it but it's not bad not bad at all this is a pretty good proof of concept um, for what I want to do with the Twizy. So that's going to be the next thing that I will do with this charge controller. So yeah, that just about wraps this one up. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been interesting. Don't forget, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all the usual socials, like and subscribe, do that stuff. And I'll catch you in the next video. I have to go out for a rip now. <laughs>